in many of the flood stories, even in Noah's story. In some of the older books, they tell that Noah saved King Og. He was the only giant he saved because King Og was born with the compassion of man, not the brutality of his forebearers. He wasn't a cannibal. He wasn't a cannibal. Now, even in Native American culture, a lot of the giants that they had in their culture, there were very few helpful ones, but the giants that were still roaming the hills of North America were known as the thigh eaters because they would pick a man up by his lower legs and bite him off up to the thighs. Um, <laughs> they were brutally large, had two rows of teeth, up 12 to 15 feet tall, and capable of having a jaw that's capable of taking a man off at the shoulders easily enough. Now, I mean, with that the size and two rows of teeth, yeah, I can, I can imagine you have some biting force. Uh, now, a thigh eater, eh, you know, maybe biting a man off at the thighs was a bit of an exaggeration, but at it, it, the width of that skull, it could easily bite a man's head clean off down to the shoulders. Mm. Now, there are tales in, um, let me, let me find my other page here. I have, there's a couple Native American tribes that have horrendous stories of an Indian coming in and warning them that the giants were heading towards their village. Now, the elders in the village all knew what this meant. Um, huh, I don't believe I brought that page with me. Anyways, <laughs> but I, I know the story well enough. Okay. Um, the village elders... This is in a, a couple books that I'll, you know, I'll try to find later and I'll put in the comments of this podcast if I can. Sure. Um, these giants plagued them. There was two of them in particular. Now, one of them came and stole a couple of women. They chased the giant down. They ruptured him. They got the women out. They were barely alive, but still alive and covered in his entrails and whatnot. Mm. Now, somehow he ate these women whole, which I don't understand that part of the story, but this is folklore, so we're dealing with watered-down versions of it. You know, it's told okay. from one person to another. Sure. Let's say this guy grabbed, they were also known to carry baskets on their back that was big enough to put a man in, a wicker basket that they could mm. throw a man in and basically have a man for later to eat. Now, a couple of tales, they have these baskets or a large uh, deer skin sack or moose skin sack. That okay. they would do the same thing with. They'd throw a man in and carry him away. Well, Stack for later. this particular... Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. One for now, one for later kind of thing. You know, kick cats. <laughs> uh, right, right. They, uh, this giant comes. He takes two women. He escapes. They find him. They get the women back. There's still another giant roaming. And they've chased him into a cave. Now, this is in the Lovelock Caves in Nevada. If anybody wants to look the story up, it's very easy to find, right? This giant makes it back to the Lovelock Caves. It's a high point. He had to cross a little reed pond to get there. It's kind of marshy. So he was hoping he would get to this island where this, you know, cave was before they found where he was at. But... They were had they had trackers that were very good. They were, you know, Native Americans were good at what they did. Yeah. So they tracked this guy all the way up until the cave system. Now they trapped him in the cave and they know there's no exit to this cave or they think there isn't because, well, it's surrounded by a reed bed and water. So if he goes into the ground far enough and deep enough into the cave, he's going to drown. So they know yeah. what they have to do. They're going to start a fire in the cave. So they warn him first. They ask him, please agree not to eat our members anymore, and we will let you live. You know, we know you've been here far longer than us. We respect that. Mm -hmm. You know, there's things we believe we could learn from you if we could live together. Just please agree not to eat our people. Now, these things had booming voices, and they spoke in their language because they communicated with several of the Indians. Mm -hmm. Now, at this point, they're hearing nothing from the cave. So they're assuming maybe he's traveled down into the cave and he's just trying to avoid them. They send some scouts in a little ways and they yell the same message out. They hear no return. So they come back. They said, you know, we've got no agreement. We don't know what to do. You know, we don't want to kill them, but what do we do if we walk away? They're just going to pick us off again. Yeah. So they lit fire at the mouth of the cave. 
Now the fire burned for a couple days. They were stacking reeds up from the lake, burning their canoes. I mean, they were shoving stuff into this fire. They were sucking all the oxygen out of this cave. They knew what they had to do. Mm -hmm. Now 